I was born in a, in a log cabin in 1948 in Watersweet, Michigan. My grandmother delivered me. I was the eighth of nine children, and uh, we, uh, it was pretty rough. Uh, we didn't have any running water or no electricity or anything, so uh, you never know you're poor because everybody around you is poor. So, so I will tell you the story of uh, what happened uh, to me when I was five years old. In the summer of 1955, I was five years old. A government agent and a Jes Jesuit priest started coming around my grandfather's house. We as a family were, with, were living with them at the time. We as children did not know the events that would change our lives forever. The government and the Catholic Church had a program in place since 1884 that gave them the right to take children away from their homes and place them in orphanages and Catholic schools. The program was designed to assimilate the Indian children into white society. Their motto was, kill the Indian, save, spare the child. Our elders of the tribe were threatened with jail if they refused to surrender their children. So in August, the priest came back with a station wagon and then asked us all, all the kids of the tribe if they wanted to go to get ice cream. Who wouldn't? It was such a treat back then. So we headed to town and he told us first we had to stop in the, at a church. And, and he told us uh, th that um, that we had to come to church and they began baptizing us. Uh, we didn't know what the, what they were uh, doing. But, you know, for ice cream, they could pour water on us for all day, you know. It didn't mean that much to us. So when I got home, I told my grandmother what happened and they told me, she told me they were trying to steal my soul. I did not know what she meant at the time. So in September of that year, the priest came back with the sheriff and the priest, the priest had a big school bus and the sheriff told us either we had to get on the school bus or they would take us, the sheriff would take us to the reform school. So, so all the kids got on the bus and the bus continued to travel through the UP where they were picking up other children from different reservations and towns. And they traveled, traveled all the way down to the Straits of Mackinac where we got in on a ferry and they took us across to a, a town called Harbor Springs. It's by Petoskey, Michigan. When we got off the bus for the first time and we saw them nuns, at the time they wore them big habits with big black and with the white, uh, they looked like penguins or whatever. And uh, some of the older kids started speaking in our native Ojibwe tongue and the uh, nuns started beating on them and told us we were not to speak our language anymore, only English. So that was just the beginning of the abuse we were going to suffer by the hands of the, by the nuns throughout the years. The nuns took us into a big room to get a haircut and at, a, at the time I had long hair and they and the boys, uh, they had to cut us all bald and they poured powder and kerosene on our heads to de louse us. And the girls had to get, all get page cuts. That was very traumatic for us. 
and they took away our clothes and they burned them and they gave us different clothes to wear even though our parents uh, bought new clothes for us to go to this school. A lot of the foods we tried to eat or that were given us to, to eat uh, we never ate before and a lot of us refused to eat and we got beat for that and we'd have to sit there and eat or we'd sneak it to yes, someone might like it so we one of our family members would eat the certain things and we all learned to eat so we all wouldn't get beat so we all pitched in to eat the food you know and uh, a lot of us never drank milk before so some of us messed our pants, you know, we were lactose intolerant, as they call it, and some of the kids messed their pants and they got beat for that. And so we had to pray for for everything, you know. We had to pray before we could go to bed. We had to pray for every meal, after meals. And, uh, their indoctrination to the Catholic religion was non-stop. We went to church two times a day and three times on Sunday. And, and there were there were sexual predators amongst uh, the nuns that picked out nice looking girls or boys and made them sleep with them. And, my experience uh, with them was very confusing for when I got older. The nuns would come and, you know, when you're taking a bath and you get to age of around 12 or 13, you're very self-conscious. And, and uh, they would come in there and they would, they would wash you up and, and uh, even your private parts. And, and then if you responded in a physical way, you know, they would uh, slap you up and tell you you're going to hell for being a pig about it. And that was very confusing to a young mind. These people are supposed to be people of God, you know, and, and you respond in that way and they tell you that you're going to hell. It's very very confusing to you, you know, and you can imagine what that happened, what, what goes on in a, in a young person's mind for feeling that way. I spent eight years in, in that place and, and then I was transferred down to another school called Boysville, Michigan. It's down by Tecumseh, uh, Clinton, Michigan. and. Uh, their, their education was great, you know, even to this day my brother who suffers from alcoholism because I, I was an, I am an alcoholic, I, I've been, uh, I've been lucky that I, I saw treatment and, but uh, that was the outcome of being in these orphanages, a lot of people returned were uh, very promiscuous and they they uh, they uh, turned to alcohol and drugs. I wonder how many of them ever survived, you know, or drank themselves to death, or committed suicide one way or the other. And um, their education was great, but. Uh, the price we paid was so horrific. We are still paying that price today uh, on the reservations. Our, uh, we, we pass our, our perception of life and our, our uh, non-spirituality, you know, our soul, our spirit got so wounded that a lot of them, they, they, they couldn't uh, get past that because our spirit was kind of torn and it, it was so confused. So we weren't allowed to uh, 
to learn our own ways, our own religion, and their their God was so mean, we didn't want nothing to do with it. So we we were like uh, I always explained to it like uh, like we're a, like a nice shiny empty can blown in the wind, just beautiful, you know, even a Bud Light can blown out. Mm -hmm. How pretty it is makes a lot of noise, but there's nothing inside, you know, the spirit, you know, it's empty, it's gone. So, uh, all my good feelings were shut off, and uh, I was filled with this rage, this self-hatred. They taught us to hate yourself for who you are, the color of your skin, and uh, being an Indian was bad. And all the pictures I have of of me in them war, in them schools, I always have a cowboy shirt on. Nothing, nothing uh, of uh, Native Americans was was uh, We were we were taught to hate ourselves for who we are, and that gave us low self-esteem, no confidence, no positive perceptions of life. You know, it was all negative. And, and that was that was one of the uh, th that was one of their main goals was to break the bonds of you having uh, to the native ways and even your family bonds. By the time I got out of there, all my older siblings were either in the service or the the girls were married off and they moved away. And uh, my mother was an alcoholic, and and she passed on, and my father is gone, and uh, uh, that was the main focus of this was to break the bonds of, of of the of the native ways, the tribe, and and they succeeded. What we got now is just uh, uh, we're a, a tribe. In name only, it's uh, more or less every man for themselves. You know, uh, I got mine to hell with you, yeah. and it's uh, it's sad. And uh, and uh, when you get traumatized at such a young age, physiologically you stay that way, and every time you come under stress, you you revert back to you lash out like a little child you was. You know instead of coming back with a grown-up grown response to a adverse situation. And it's uh, remarkable to see some 80-year-old woman or something, you know, going like a little girl or a little kid, you know, like eighth graders and acting and behaviors. And, and it's all prevalent to the tribe now. Uh, uh, I have a class now. Of I uh, I tried to get people to acknowledge. I teach down at the tribe uh, uh, at nine o'clock. I hold a, hold a meeting there, and and I on Thursdays. And I try to get the young people to understand that where their behaviors come from, it comes from my generation that we were put through all this hell. And, and we just pass all our negative behaviors and beliefs, like don't trust white people, don't trust the cops, don't trust anybody of authority. And, uh, and that's true, no matter who, who's in authority, people will, hate, will uh, resent them, no matter, no matter if it's even their own brother or sister or something. And so if you've got a place of authority, they resent you for it because that's the way it is, you know. That's their belief system. I always resist, and uh, and it's uh, it's been it's a been a struggle. But I do see some light. I I do find some people willing to 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 listen and acknowledge. Hey, yes, this is me. This I can change it. That's the only only way we can change this is people. But acknowledge we have a problem, and yes, we can 
change our perception in life to the positive way. And that's where, I, like, what me and my wife built here, we built this house because this was my dream to have something, you know, because uh, uh, it's always been, uh, it's always been a, a struggle for me. I, uh, after I got out of, out of the system, out of the orphanages, I wanted to graduate from Watersmeet High School because uh, uh, no one graduated uh, Native since 1948 when my uncle did it. So uh, that was one of my goals. And uh, I, um, I, I tried to, well, after I got out of high school, I, I got drafted into the Army and I went to Vietnam. And I spent uh, 11 months, 22 days, and three hours there. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't a uh, very ni uh, good experience for me. And, uh, and I and I when I come back from there, I I all I did was drink and 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 it was. It was a nightmare. I was just trying to forget a lot of. I was drinking to suppress all the bad memories of the childhood, being in Vietnam, seeing my friends killed, and, and all the all the th hells of war. You know. It wasn't until I started going to the VA that I that I finally got to understand what my problem was, where all my trauma comes from. I had a severe case of PTSD. And um, I went to Tomo, Wisconsin, and they had a good program there at the time. And, and they kind of took me apart mentally and found out what, what was really behind all the crazy behaviors I was experiencing, why I was the way I was. And, I have to give a lot of credit to them. They really, they did a really good job for me, and I thank them. And if it wasn't for them, my wife and I would probably wouldn't have been together as long as we have. Yeah. I do love her very much. She is my rock.